about him. Maybe. I mean, it may be Russia. I have nothing to do with Russia. She likes to put the narrative of Donald Trump. I have nothing to do with Russia. I don't know money. I don't have deals in Russia. I don't know Putin. So why not accept our intelligence agency's conclusion? Well, I haven't seen the conclusion. But you know what? Hacking, I understand. And you really, it's very hard to determine who's doing the hacking. What I have seen, though, is I have seen WikiLeaks. And where they came from, I don't know. But they're real. And they're not even being denied. And the disrespect that those people have, and the dishonesty, too, by the way, the dishonesty. I mean, the one that came out yesterday about, you know, the server and going to President Obama. So, therefore, he knew about it. That brings him into the picture, which he didn't want to be brought into that picture. But her emails going to him, and he understands, and these are supposed to be so classified want, emails. You want the whole thing, I'll tell you what, the whole thing is a scam, and it's horrible. You want a special prosecutor to investigate Hillary Clinton, so now President Obama should be investigated as well? That's what you said. Yes, but President Obama made the statement that he didn't know anything about it, but in the meantime, he's getting emails. So it proved that he did know about it. You said yesterday should be investigated. Who should, should be investigated? Investigate. The president. Let them do whatever they want. Look, he knew. He lied. He certainly lied because he knew the emails because they were sent to him. Let's talk about Mueller. And that was a big deal yesterday. I mean, you do agree that was a big deal yesterday. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was news yesterday. It was news. It was news. It was news. So let's talk about Mosul. Uh, on, on Sunday, you sent out a tweet saying that the, the, that the operation was a total disaster. The defense secretary is on the ground. He says they're making progress. He's encouraged by the pro progress. The former dean of the Army War College says this shows that Trump doesn't know a damn thing about military strategy. The Army War College, let me tell you, the element of surprise. I've been hearing about Mosul now for three months. We're going to attack. We're going to attack, meaning Iraq's going to attack, but with us, okay? We're going to attack. Why do they have to talk about it? Why can't they keep it quiet and attack? Now, as you know, the attack is being met with great, you know, resistance. Because they were totally prepared. Because the politicians are all talking about it. Because Obama is talking about it. Don't talk about it. Element of surprise. General George Patton. And you look at General George Patton. You look at uh, you look at MacArthur. You look at these great generals. And I say it all the time. They're spinning in their grave. Mosul, number one, we shouldn't have even had to do. Because when we got out, we had Mosul. Now we have to take it a second time. We had this. We have to take it because Hillary Clinton and Obama left that big vacuum and ISIS went in and they took She says you're declaring. Here's the other. A year ago, I. Uh huh. Okay. Well, wait, before the wait, battle let, me, let me finish with Mosul. Element of surprise. One of the reasons they wanted Mosul, they wanted to get the ISIS leaders who they thought were in, us, in Mosul. Those people all left. As soon as they heard they're going to be attacked, they left. The resistance is, says 35 have been taken out. Excuse me. The resistance is much greater now because they knew about the attack. All I'm saying is this. We shouldn't have to be fighting for Mosul. We're only fighting for Mosul because Hillary Clinton blew it and gave it back to him. So now we have to take it a second time. Of great importance, why do they have to talk? Why can't they win first and talk later? Why do they have to say three months before the attack, we're going in. So you can tell your military expert that I'll sit down and I'll teach him a couple of things. If he tells you that it's okay to announce, ladies and gentlemen, in three months we're going into Mosul, why wouldn't you say that? Why wouldn't you do a surprise attack? Grab all these ISIS leaders. They all left, George. They all left because they happened to be smart. They heard it's going to be attacked. They left. And they left plenty of tough people behind because it's a tough attack. And you know that. And it's being met with great resistance. I would have done it much differently. I would have said very quietly to my generals, go get them and don't talk. They would have gone. They would have been, it would have been much easier. They would have probably gotten some people that they won't get now. And then I would have had a conference when it was all finished and I would have told them what we did. Now, your man on whoever this gentleman is, I guarantee you I can put my narrative before the American people and let whoever this person is put his and they will agree with me. On Saturday, you said that you would threaten to sue the 11 women who have accused you of sexual assault. You know, I hate that you waste time. When we're talking about ISIS and we're talking about jobs and you're still bringing that up, everybody wants to bring it up. Look, that was just Saturday. These were false attacks. These things never happened. These people, I don't know these people, these things never ever happened. This was out of the blue. It was made up probably by the Clinton campaign. Do you have any evidence of that? 
well, many of the stories have already been debunked. Many of the stories have already been debunked. As you yeah. know, People Magazine story they brought forward six. Why didn't she write Robert's the story, story twelve years ago? She said she was afraid. Oh, she was afraid. Give me a break. She was afraid to write it. She would have gotten the Pulitzer Prize. Give me a break. She was afraid, and she had the butler as a witness, right? Who no longer works for me. So she had the butler as a witness, except for one problem. Six corroborated. Excuse women. me. Excuse me. There was nobody corroborated. They said years later she talked about it. Look, the butler, she said, was there. One problem. The butler said it never happened. He doesn't work for me. No longer. He's a good man, by the way. He's a good man. But he hasn't worked for me in years. They went to the butler. He said it never happened. Nobody so reported all these that. Women, why didn't everyone they talk to her? They made up stories. You know why? Fame or they wanted to help Clinton or something. They made up they stories. came out after you denied George, George, George. George. Let's not waste any more time. These stories were fabricated. They're total lies. So you're going to go through with the lawsuit? I won't find out. Let's see what happens with the election. We're going to find out. But I'm just telling you, these stories are total lies, and you shouldn't be wasting time. And remember this. Why didn't you write about the butler? You knew about the butler refuting her story. Why didn't anybody write it? It's a very unfair press. One of your toughest critics on this is the First Lady, Michelle Obama. She says, your behavior, your words are cruel. They are frightening. This is not how decent people behave. This is not how... People who want to be president behave. Well, what's she going to say? Is she going to say I'm wonderful? Now, look, she made the statement about Hillary Clinton. I've heard the statement for years. I had no idea it was Michelle Obama. She made the statement that if you can't take care of your own house, you can't take care of the White House. You know, I've heard that statement. <laughs> she said she's talking about her own house. Oh, come on. Look, you know better than that. That was during the campaign. She said about Hillary Clinton. You can't take care of your own house, meaning Bill Clinton. Then how can you take care of the White House? It was a vicious statement. It was covered at the time, and it's gone all over the world. I mean, it's a very well-known statement. I would never have used it, other than I saw the other night on television, they went back eight years, and they played that statement. It was her that made the statement. What do you think of what she's now saying? Now, right I'm such a bad person. Look, what is she going to say? Is she going to say, I'm fantastic? Is she going to say, I'm going to not let jobs leave our country anymore? We're going to keep our jobs. You have to see what's happening to our country. Our companies are leaving from Mexico and other places, and we're losing our jobs. Is she going to say Trump is better at that than any other human being in the world? Okay, which I believe I am. Okay, I will stop it cold. We have so many things to do that, you know, but now look, she's the first lady. She's got to say what she's got to say. I mean, I understand that that's the game. President Obama says you should stop whining about the system. I'm not whining about anything. I'm not whining about anything. Here's another one. So eight years ago, Obama talked about the elections in Chicago, essentially saying how they were rigged, okay? Now it's, oh, nobody would ever rig an election. You have 1,800,000 dead people registered to vote, and some of them vote, which is interesting. You have almost 3 million people that are registered to vote in two different states. Now, I'm not making a big deal. I think I'm going to win the election. I think I'm going to win you look at Florida right now, you look at North Carolina, you look at Ohio, you look at Iowa, you look at these places, people are starting to get, I mean, the press is starting to get very concerned. And I see it all over the news this morning. But you look at what's going on in Florida where the lines are four blocks long and most of those people have red hats on. Uh, I'll tell you what, things are going to be... You do sound pretty different. energized today. When you look back over the sweep of this campaign, going back to, to last year, is there anything you regret? Oh, absolutely. I'd love to have done certain things over, but you can't. You can't. But that's true in life. I'd love to have, have done in life certain things over, I guess. And you would have, too. Give me one. You would have loved not to have contributed to the Clinton Foundation, as an example. There are things that you wish you didn't do, okay? You came very close to the edge. You would have loved to have had that decision over again. There are things I would have rather, you know, not happen. But, George, all you can do is you put your head down and you have to go forward. But I'm really happy. Look, I started off, you were one of, actually, Jonathan Carl, your person, did just about, in fact, he was badly criticized in this building. He did an interview. I said, I'm seriously thinking about running. And he was criticized because everybody thought I was playing games. But when I ran, it was 17 people. It was actually 18. But it was 17 people, governors, senators, talented people, people like Ben Carson, who's a phenomenal guy who endorsed me. But but there were 17 very talented people, mostly politicians at the highest level. And everybody said, you know what? Trump can't win this. These people have been doing this all their lives. He's got no experience. 
And then one by one by one, they disappeared. And one of your competitors said, as they sat around a round table, 